By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to dive into the world of Ice Age. Yes, I said Ice Age. Because in 2021, at the first day of winter, we organized an Ice Age constructed tournament. And this is actually one of the first matches played in that tournament. So for the upcoming weeks, on every Tuesday, I will show you a match played at this tournament, starting with the group stages all the way to the finals. So there are going to be like four or five matches coming on the channel. I hope you're an Ice Age fan. I remember pulling open my first Ice Age pack. That was a while ago. And I've always found the set to be super cool art-wise and kind of disappointing power-wise, especially looking at the creatures. Now, um, in this particular matchup, we're going to look at a deck that I've called Icy Control. It's being piloted by Nick. Uh, it's white, it's blue, it's red. And he's playing against me. And I'm actually playing with a pretty straightforward deck, but a deck that I really like and that really takes me back to when I started playing Magic. It's mono white, it's basically white weenie, and it's got all the cool Kjeldorans in there. So I was just a big fan of the art of those knights. Um, so yeah, I, I made a deck out of it, and uh, we're gonna see how it performs. It's pretty basic. Um, anyway, before I jump into the deck deck, I would just like to point out that, as always, you can also skip that section, go straight to the action. How can you do that? Simply check the description below, and there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there. That will take you straight to the games themselves. And um, you can also find a link there to the Ice Age Tournament website, where you can, can find all the ins and outs of the rule set that we followed for this tournament because certain cards were restricted such as Jester's Cap and Jester's Mask and Necropotence. Um, but the basic rule was just make a deck, 60 cards, no sideboard, and they, all the cards have to be Ice Age. That's it, so it's, it's pretty simple. Anyway, um, let's now start with the deck decks, right? Um, let's just start with my deck. The I've called it Call to Arms, let's have a look. And here we see my deck. Now I've called it Call to Arms and this deck has a little story attached to it. There's a reason that I'm playing Mono White. The main reason is uh, I just love the Kjeldoran art when Ice Age came out, right? I just love those soldiers. I mean, if you look at the Kjeldoran warrior, I mean, that's really a badass, right? I know it's just a 1-1 banner, but look at the art. If you look at Kjeldoran Sky Knight, Kjeldoran Sky Captain, I mean, all those, I, I just love the art of Ice Age. So that really took me in and of course, when you're a starting player, combining little soldiers together and making it into one army that is kind of really like a nice feeling. It's a simple concept. So it's something that I really understood early on. And I was still doubting whether to play this or play my blue black wizard deck. But then uh, Chris, a patron of the channel, sent me his signed call to arms for this tournament. So, I mean, then it was done, right? Then the deal was done. I had to play mono white and I love it. I absolutely love it. I don't think it's very strong um, for the simple reason that the creatures are just too small and not good enough. So there's just too much removal in Ice Age, but I think under the right circumstances, if I go fast enough, I can definitely win some games and hopefully uh, this match will be one of those. So what I want to do is pretty much, you know, white weenie strategy, just get a lot of creatures on board, deal some early damage, but I also have a game plan for later. I'm playing with some pretty heavy um, casting cost creatures like Seraph, for example, I also play with Icy Manipulator. So I do have some strategies later on in the game. Of course, I'm hoping to use my Swords to Plowshares and Disenchants as well. They're super strong control cards, and I'm hoping to use them to kind of get rid of the Icy Manipulators of my opponent, and of course use the Swords to Plowshares to pave my way free of any potential blockers that my, my opponent may have. So I can just keep attacking and keep dealing damage. Then another interesting card in this deck, I think at least, is uh, Skull Catapult. Skull Catapult is a card I can pay one and tap and sacrifice a creature to have a deal two damage. Now this may not sound very good, but you have to understand most opponents will have a lot of removal because Ice Age is really good at dealing with creature threats and it's really bad at the creature threat side because the creatures are kind of lackluster. They're not very powerful. They have a high casting cost. Um, you know, even the even the white weenie creatures that don't have a high casting cost are still pretty underwhelming. Like a Kjeldoran Sky Knight is three mana for a 1-1 flyer. So that's just not very strong. So if my opponent uses some of their removal to get rid of those creatures, which is not too difficult, I can respond by using my Skull Catapult, sacking the creature, dealing two damage, right? So that is kind of the scenario. So I'm hoping to put a lot of damage in early in the game, 
And then if my opponent is what on four or something to kind of find that skull catapult and and just give those final points of damage talking about final points of damage there's also a cold uh, card called ruined arch which is an artifact comes into play tapped i can pay x and sacrifice it to make x target creatures unblockable with power two or less so it's kind of a dwarven warrior on a stick unfortunately it comes into play untapped uh, sorry tapped so there's no surprise effect but I think under the right circumstances, uh, this can also be a game changer and uh, and can pave my way to victory. So yeah, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward deck. Maybe one last card to highlight is the card Justice. Since we're not playing with sideboards, you have to decide if you want to put a color hoser in or not. Now Justice can be quite relevant in this match. It's two white and two to cast for an enchantment. I've got to pay two white during the upkeep or else it destroys itself. This is really typical Ice Age, right? A lot of upkeep costs. But what it does is actually really good. Any damage dealt by a red creature or red spell, that damage is given back to the opponent. So yes, I still take the damage, but my opponent also take the damage. So if my opponent plays an incinerate on one of my creatures, that also means that my opponent, in this case Nick, will also take three damage. So I think, I hope to find a justice and maybe I can win some games. Let's, um, I'm just going to start praying and in the meanwhile, we're going to have a look at the deck of my opponent, Nick. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Nick. So I've called it UWR IC Control. It's just, this really shows what Ice Age is good at. That's controlling the board, right? I mean, look at this. He's got counter spells. He's got Binding Grasp. Binding Grasp is the control magic of Ice Age with, of course, this weird upkeep cost. Anyway, but um, you've got Swords to Plowshares. You've got Disenchants. I've got those too. He's got Red in here in the mix for the four Incinerates, basically the Lightning Bolt of Ice Age, and also he's got some Lava Bursts. I mean, this is just a very strong deck, and the only creatures that he's playing with is one Seraph and one Blinking Spirit. So um, it's actually going to be difficult for me to get my Call to Arms working against this deck because there are hardly any permanents in here. He's really going to make me lose against myself. I'm probably going to cast some creatures. He's going to steal those creatures and kill me with it, and all the other creatures he's probably going to remove with Incinerates, Lava Bursts and Swords to Plowshares. And if I just don't have any creatures at all, then that's fine too. He can just kill me with that Lava Burst or that Incinerate. He also has a lot of counter magic. So yeah, this is going to be a long game and probably I'm going to lose. This is kind of the deck version, you could say, of uh, of Ice Age. I mean, let me know if you agree, but I'm just looking at it now and thinking it's kind of the deck. What I'm missing here, what I would add personally are a couple of Elkin Bottles. Elkin Bottle is just a great way to draw cards. Of course, he has some card drawing, right? He's got Portent. He's got um, uh, Brain Geyser. Sorry, uh, Brainstorm. Brain Geyser is, of course, another card. Brainstorm. Um, so he does have a few options. I just think this is a really good and, and, and solid deck. Now, there's one of the artifacts that I would like to talk about because I think it's just a really good artifact. It's an artifact I personally didn't think about. Um, that's called Vexing Arcanix. So Vexing Arcanix, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. It's four to cast. It's an artifact, three and tap. Then it says target player names a card and then turns over the top card of his or her library. If that is the card name, put it into that player's hand. Otherwise, put it into the player's graveyard and the Vexing Arcanix deals two damage to that player. So it's really a great way when you're a control deck to kind of mill your opponent and kill your opponent at the same time. This is a really good card. And what I also like about this is that Nick is also playing with Brainstorm. So if he can play a Brainstorm, then he knows what's on top of his library and he can use the Arcanix to kind of quickly draw those cards again and get fresh cards from his library. So that's also some nice synergy there. So I think it's really cool uh, Nick, that you've added this card to your deck. Another card that I noticed is a Zurin Orb, and maybe you're wondering, hmm, maybe I would play with two Zurin Orbs in this deck. Well, actually, Zurin Orb is one of those cards. There aren't a lot, but like Necropotent, Zurin Orb, Jester's Cap, Jester's Mask, one of those cards that got uh, restricted in this format. So not banned, but restricted. And obviously, Zurin Orb, super good card, zero to cast, sack a land, gain two life. It's insane, right? It's just, it's so good. I, I don't understand when you're designing the set and you don't see, okay, maybe Zurin Orb will be a problem in the future, right? Same, I guess Necropotence maybe was a little bit more difficult to to see the problems with that card, but with Zurin Orb, it's, for me, it's, it's, it's really easy. But then again, easy in, where are we at now? We're at 2022, right? So it's easy for now. But in those days, of course, magic was completely different. Maybe a nice thing to know about Ice Age, 
this set, the start of the design of this set, actually started before uh, Arabian Nights. So it, this set is actually really, really old, but it took a long time before it was finished and before it eventually got printed. But I guess that's a whole different episode. So this is the deck of Nick. Control, control, control. He's going to take on my Call to Arms deck. Now let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. I'm on the play, so that's a good start for me. Starting with a Gjaldorn Warrior. That's exactly what I want to do. Just get early creatures on, put some pressure on Nick's life total. That's the game I want to play. Now let's hope that Nick cannot get rid of this creature straight away. There we see an Ardarkar. Is it Ardarkar Wastes? It's one of those dual lands from Ice Age, blue and white. When you tap it, you take a damage. And, ooh, there we go, pumping my warrior. Oh, that is painful. That is, uh, I've played an Armor of Faith on my Keldoran warrior, and in response, Nick played the Swords to Plowshares. So that's really a classic two for one, trying to do it again. Armor of Faith, again, the swords. So two swords in that opening hand by Nick, and that's really a killer for me. Four cards down. There we see a portent by Nick, so that means he can look at the top three cards, put them in order. If he wants to, he can shuffle his library, and then during the next upkeep, he can draw a card, so that's in my upkeep. So he's probably going to pass turn. There you see him draw a card as well, so I'm finding more lands. Hopefully I've got something like more creatures. I do not, it seems, just passing turn. This is the game that Nick wants to play. Nick is in here for the long run. He is the control player. The longer the game takes, it harder it's going to be for me to actually win it. There we see a blinking spirit. So a 2-2 flyer and for zero you can get it back to your hand. So it's super difficult to kill. It's probably going to swing in here. So I'm going to drop to 20, gain some extra life from those two swords to plowshares. And there we go. I'm finding a 2-2. This is a... Um, yeah, it's a Keldoran, of course. I forgot the full name, but it's a 2-2. I can tap it to give target creature plus 2, plus 2. But if then that creature dies, so does my 2-2 uh, creature. Okay, anyway, there's a quick incinerate. So, doesn't matter at all. Ooh, there we see the Vexing Arcanix. So he can start dealing damage as well now with the Arcanix. I'm down to 18 after another attack of the Blinking Spirit. Playing a Keldoran Sky Captain here. So it's a 1-1 one, one flyer. It's not really a big problem here for my opponent. And I'm showing it right now to him. So that's kind of fun. Like both of us don't play Ice Age that often, but we do remember it from back in the day. So sometimes you need a moment to show each other the cards and kind of explain what's what. So here we see that Vexing Arcanix. I'm kind of expecting Nick to start using it on my deck. So then he's milling me and he's dealing damage. And I guess if someone uses the Arcanix against you, there are two things you can do. Because remember, if I know the card, I get to draw it. So there's the highest chance to find is, of course, a basic planes for me. But I don't really need basic planes. So I can say basic planes or I can say the card that I actually want to draw. So that I'm sure that that card doesn't go into the, uh, into the bin, into the graveyard. It's kind of tough. Probably the best strategy is just to mention uh, basic planes. There's a pass, so he's not using the Arcanix yet. He's going to wait until my end step. Okay, there's a Justice. So Justice is too white and two to cast. I talked about it in the uh, deck deck. It's an enchantment. And all the damage that I now get from a Red Swords by Nick is also dealt to Nick. So it's kind of nice. If he plays an Incinerate, for example, on my creature, then he also takes three damage because the Incinerate is a Red Source. Attacking here with the 1-1, one, one, dealing 1 damage, playing another Kjeldoran Warrior. That's number 3 now, finding its way onto the board. His other two brothers are long, long gone to, due, due to those sorts of plowshares, but this one is still standing tall. Okay, there we see him using the Arcanix, and I'm going to lose my sorts to plowshares here and take 2 damage. That's super painful for me. On the other hand, swords doesn't really help that much. It's more like an unsummon now on that, Kjeldor, on that uh, Blinking Spirit, I mean. So I'm on 12, um, I can attack for two at least. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So Nick is gonna drop to 14 using the Arcanix again. And I'm actually now thinking, do I wanna say Swords or Disenchant? Um, but I'm not doing it. And there it goes, I'm taking two more damage going to 10. I think that Arcanix is so, so good. It's doing so much work. And now together with the Blinking Spirit, of course, he can deal four damage per turn and I can only deal two damage per turn. So I've got a huge problem. I'm on eight. I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, of course, I'm tapping the two white form of justice, attacking again for two. 
I'm not quite sure what I'm hoping on here. And here we see an under, another Arcanix activation losing Seraph of the Dawn. That card would have been so good. It could block the Blinking Spirit and it can use it as a 4-4 attacker. I'm losing some really good cards to the Vexing Arcanix here. There we see a Seraph of the Dawn by Nick. Oh, that feels kind of unfair. So I'm going to let the Justice die. And what am I going to do? I'm going to play my own Seraph of the Dawn. So I had a 4-4 in hand. So I'm going to use that to block. But I'm on 2. This is like a lost cause, I think. He's just going to use his Arcanix twice. And that's going to kill me. So showing my troops here. I mean, I'm happy with the way my deck looks. But I don't think it's really performing here against Nick. I mean, I wonder if he's going to attack with his Seraph. I don't think so, because my Sky Captain has banding. So what I could do if he attacks with the Seraph is ban my Seraph with my Sky Captain, block the Seraph, put all the damage on my bird, and then the Seraph dies and actually gain control of it. So I'm secretly hoping that Nick doesn't see this and that he's going to attack. So um, yeah, let's, let's, let's find out. So Nick, can you please attack so I can show this very cool trick? You'll still win with your Arcanix. I mean, I have to find a disenchant, right? So let's see what Nick's gonna do. I mean, he's probably just gonna pass. Oh, okay, or play Lava Burst. That's it, that's it. Game is done. At least game one, right? We still got game two. I mean, this is kind of what you can expect, right? The control player really kind of killing all my creatures on the spot. And then later in the game, you know, taking over control. I must say that Arcanix, what a good card that is in this brew. Anyway, we're going to shuffle up again. And then uh, let's start with game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So it's one up for Nick. At least I'm on the play. That's something. Let's just hope that he doesn't find those sorts to plowshares again. Because that was kind of brutal. Taking a mulligan here, by the way. So starting with six... No turn one play for me. That is not ideal. There's a Plains by Nick. Just expecting him to pass here. Is he or not? Seems to be a little bit in the tank. Maybe we're just chatting about stuff. Um, I mean, there's not really a turn one play he can do. Here. Yeah, so he's passing turn here. So drawing the card. Finding some more Plains. What am I going to do here? Oh, this is a cool card. What's it called again? Um, Kjeldor Knight. Two white, it's a 1-1 one, one with banding. And for one white and one, I can give it plus one, plus O. Oh. And for two white, it can give it plus O, oh, plus two. This is actually a card on the reserve list. Okay, there's the swords again. <laughs> I mean, I don't even have time to explain the card. It's such a cool... I mean, the art is by, I think, is it Richard Kane Ferguson? No, it's Ron Spencer, of course. But really cool art. Anyway, there's a Kildoran Warrior from my part. Let's, let's hope it stays alive. No, there's an incinerate. Okay, so everything gets uh, gets uh, killed here. There we see an island by Nick. So he's got all his colors on board now. He's killed everything I've cast so far. I'm not finding any more planes, it seems. That is bad news. And there we see another planes by Nick in the past turn. Okay, so I'm finding something. Kjeldoran Sky Captain, 1-1 one, one Flyer, Banding and First Strike. And I'm showing all the Kjeldorans. No, this one's also going to die. Oh, man. Oh, there's really nothing I can do. There we see a brainstorm. I mean, this is kind of a problem, right? In the Ice Age design. So many answers. And so Nick using his brainstorm to find the cards he needs. And let's see what he stormed for. What is he going to do here? Playing another land. There's an Icy Manipulator. At least he's not tapping a land down. That's kind of nice. Thank you, Nick. You know, you're allowing me to play my Kildor and Sky Captain. I like that. Thank you. So I'm just going to keep playing creatures. At a certain point, he's got to run out of answers, right? And I should be able to deal some damage. At this point, it's not going to happen yet because he can simply tap down my bird. Ooh, there's the Vexing Arcanix again. That is so annoying. He's going to take the damage. Interesting. He's not going to tap down the bird. He is going to counter this 2-2, two -two, a power sink, actually. That's too bad, because I could have used it to kind of buff my Sky Captain to a 3-3 three -three when I attack. And, um, yeah, I wonder why he's not using the, the Icy Manipulator. 
And so now he's tapping it down. Then I'm playing a Justice. So finding Justice again. And he's using the Arcanix. And I actually set playing. So this card I can keep in my hand. That's kind of nice. So the Arcanix giving me a card instead of dealing damage here. There's another Planes. Attacking again, but it's getting tapped down. Again, the Arcanix taking damage, losing my Kjeldoran Knight here. And a pass turn. So I've got to pay two white for the Justice. And there's an untap. So just um, a lot happening, but not really a lot happening, right? I'm on 18, Nick's on 19. He keeps tapping down my bird. I keep losing. Creatures slowly going down in life total. This resembles game number one a lot. Just a lot of control here by Nick. I mean, it's beautiful to see all the Ice Age cards, but we don't really have an exciting matchup yet. So maybe I can find a way through the army. There's at least an Order of the White Shield. So one of my better creatures in the deck, a 2-1 protection from black, which is not relevant right now, but I can also give it first strike and plus one plus O, oh, so I can pump it. So that's something. And it means I've got two creatures on the board, so maybe I can get some damage in. I mean... You know, you, you try to do what you can do. So I want to attack. He's going to tap it again. And um, that's it is what it is. There we see a disenchant on the justice. Also using, of course, the Arcanix again. Damn, that's a really cool creature I'm losing there. That is Richard Kane Ferguson art, by the way. I'm losing it. 2-5 Bander. But um, it is what it is. Oh, there's a huge Lava Burst. Probably on my life total, right? So that's a Lava Burst for 8. So a Lava Burst for 8. So then I'm going to drop to 8. Yeah, exactly. So half my life total. And he's going to, of course, tap down the Order of the White Shield now. Ooh, nice. Finding an Armor of Faith. So that means my Sky Captain is now a 2-2. Attacking with 2. So he's going to drop to 17. <laughs> Oh, Disenchant. Oh, this is kind of nice. Disenchant on the Arcanix. Okay. I'm seeing a silver lining on the cloud here. I mean, I'm still not quite sure that I'm going... Oh, of course. Lava Burst. Of course. Of course. I'm finally getting back into it, Nick. This is not cool. Anyway, um, despite the fact... Oh, look at this. I'm responding with the Swords to Plowshares on my own order. I'm pumping my order, so I'm gaining enough life to stay alive. I'm still on two. I'm not dead yet. Yes, I'm still in it. In it to win it. And what I wanted to say, at this tournament, every single game win counts. So it's not that you've lost after 2-0. You can still, we're still going to play the third game. Um, if it's going to be 2-0, of course, because I'm still not dead. I'm still on two. And he stepped out, so I can at least attack him for two. So he's going to drop to 15, I guess. I'm still in it. Playing my Call to Arms, which is pretty useless against uh, the deck of Nick. But still, it's a cool card you just cast. And uh, there he's going to play another Icy Manipulator. He's, of course, going to tap down my bird. Not much I can do. Playing a Ruined Arch, which comes into play tapped. Again, a card with very little impact. I think probably the Arcanix would have been better to play in this deck. Then again, I think the Arch, it's just a cool idea that you put your whole army like th through this this arch and make it unblockable. I kind of like that idea. And it's beautiful art by, I think, Kaya Foglio. But I mean, he's got two ICs, I'm on two. Of course, Zern Orp. So he's going to tap it down. So what I said, every game counts. So even if I lose this one, we're still going to play the third game. And, uh, you know, maybe I can win it. For now... This seems to be really a cost without a chance of victory for me. Looks like he's tapping quite a lot of mana. Are we going to see a new Leva Burst or something? No, it's Seraph. And there's a Swords on the Seraph. So Nick's going to get some more life. He's going to go up to 19 again. Oh, 15 actually. Wow. And there we see a Skull Catapult. Oh, of course, 15 because of the Call to Arms. I've probably said White. But then again, my Call to Arms should now be buried. So I'm, I'm making a bit of a mistake here playing with the Call to Arms. I'm sorry for that. It should be out of the game now. 
Oh, Cole to Arms, what a mediocre card you are. And let's see what Nick can do here. He really has all the control. There is an incinerate. I'm dead, right? Oh, I've got another source. Oh, that's so funny. So now I'm on one. Oh, man. Part of me just wants to see this game end it because I'm not going to win it anyway. Um, but showing him my Drought, by the way, a card that's really good against Black, but really bad in this matchup. Remember, we're not playing with sideboards, so that's why you probably play with some Color Hosers main. There we see an Order of the White Shield. He's going to steal it from me. In response, I'm going to um, sack it to my Skull Catapult. And here we can see why Skull Catapult is such a good card, right? So I'm going to deal two damage here to Nick. And he doesn't have my, uh, my creature, which is really important. So... I'm not quite sure what my game plan is here. Just probably just sticking in, trying to just play some more creatures, maybe Skull catapulting him to death, but he's got the Zern Orb, so that's not going to happen. Maybe I'm hoping for Nick to mill himself. Here we see a Blinking Spirit. And in response, I'm playing a Disenchant on the Icy Manipulator. And uh, yeah, this is game, right? Yep, this is game. Okay. <laughs> so also game number two, a very convincing win by Nick, who's really dominating this match so far. But remember, we are going to play a game three because every game win counts. So please stick with us here. We're now going to go jump into game number three. Game number three. Here we go. The last game, no matter what happens, again, I'm on the play. I mean... I, I, I don't think there's a big chance for me to win, but I want to stick in there. I mean, come on, Kjeldorns. You can do it. Got a lot of planes. That's a good start. Play something. I'm not playing anything. That's kind of odd. I would expect some knights from my part here. And okay, playing a Kjeldorn Sky Captain. We've seen a lot of Sky Captains. And of course, there's the quick answer by, uh, by Nick here. At least he has to use his Adarkar Waste, so he takes a damage. So he goes to 19 here. And I'm going to go up a life, go to 21. And there we see some more. Okay, we see the Justice again. So that's quite interesting, right? I only play with one Justice in the deck, but I found it every single game. It hasn't really helped me much, by the way. <laughs> like, actually, it hasn't helped me at all. So maybe Justice can finally pay off. Let's see what Nick is going to do. He's got four mana, so that kind of opens up some options for him in his deck to play some permanence. Like an Icy Manipulator or one of those um, Arcanixes. There we see an Order of the White Shield answered by a quick... Oh, now he's taking some damage because of the Justice, right? So he's playing Incinerate for three. That means he also takes three damage because of the Justice. So he's going to drop to 16 here. So that's not too bad. You know, I've dealt three points of damage with one of my creatures. That's really something that I can only be happy about, especially against this deck of Nick. Now we see Nick playing a portent, so he can order his first three cards, passing turn, draw a card in my upkeep. I'm going to let my Justice die. I probably have a Seraph that I want to play out. Yeah, oh, something else. I've got a Kjeldoran Sky Captain. Despite the fact that the Sky Captain is super expensive, it's only a 2-2 flyer for five mana. It's like ridiculous, but it's really cool art. And, you know, you need a captain. You need a sky captain. And, uh, oh, this is an interesting card. I forgot the name, but it can destroy enchantments. And it's an enchantment herself. So here we see the Kjeldorn Elite Guard, and we see a Kjeldorn Warrior. So I can use the Elite Guard to make my Warrior a 3-3. So that's very flavorful. And there we see a Quick Swords to Plowsiers, though. So at least I'm gaining some life. And I've got one creature on the field still. And remember, I'm just hoping that Nick will eventually run out of answers because it's all a one-for-one -one trade, right? A Swords for a creature, Incinerate for a creature, Counterspell for a creature. There has to be a certain point when he's running out of answers and I can, you know, deal some damage. And that's what I'm hoping for. So attacking here with the Warrior, he's going to drop to 13. Finding an Icy Manipulator, there's the Counterspell on the Icy. That's actually not too bad because I'm going to win, um, you know, with creatures. And now I'm saying white because he's got a white permanent on the board. That means my Kildoran Warrior gets plus one, plus one. There's a Lava Burst though. Oh, this is so annoying. At least it's not a Lava Burst on my life total, but 
I need creatures to kill him. There's a Seraph. Okay. Oh, counterspell. Man. This is so frustrating. Nick, you've built a really good deck. I mean, it's just really good control. What can I say? There's, okay, a Kjeldor Knights. Do I also, oh, and there's a Disenchant. That is really sweet. Disenchant on the Icy. And um, he's tapping, of course, my Knight in response. But that means I can start dealing some damage. Remember, for two, uh, one white and one, I can give a plus one, plus oh as well. So I'm really hoping that this Sky Knight will stick. Oh, he's playing an Incinerate, but I can boost it. Oh, he forgot about the Call to Arms. This is what I need. I need a little bit of luck, a little bit of sloppy play by Nick that maybe can give me a victory here. Oh, Swords! It's so annoying! Stop killing my stuff, man! Playing an Icy. Passing turn here. I mean, I'm on a lot of life, right? So it's going to take a long time with his Arcanix. He's on 10. I have this life total. Going through my graveyard, it's just full of dead soldiers. And, oh, I actually mentioned, did I name order of, of, of the White Shield? Did you see that? I drew that card. That's pretty cool. There we see a Seraph. That's a big problem for me. So that Seraph, that is a problem. Anyway, I did draw a card from it, so I've got a little bit of luck. Can I find a way to deal with the Seraph? I mean, I can also just attack. So, oh, he's going to swing for four. So I'm going to drop to 21. No, oh, he's not going to swing. Interesting, because remember, the order of the white shield, I can pump it for one white and one. I can give it plus one, plus oh, and I can give it first strike. So it can actually kill the Seraph. Oh, he's going to use his enchantment to kill my call to arms. That's probably a good decision. I, I forgot about the call to arms. So now I can attack. I'm counting my mana to make sure I can pump it big enough. So look at this. I'm going to make it a 4-1 first striker. And then I'm going to play another order. There we see a counterspell again. But look at Nick's hand. It's empty. He's running out of answers. If I can get the order to stick. Taking two damage here. I'm just naming creatures probably. Hoping that I can draw that with the Arcanix. Untapping here. So I can attack. I mean, Order of Faith. I'm sorry, it's not Order of Faith, but it's something with Faith. So plus one, plus oh, gonna pump it. Look at the life total of Nick. He's on three. Oh, man, that's, that's so interesting. Oh, I'm actually choosing not to pump it more than that. Oh, of course, because with the Armor of Faith, that's the name. With the Armor of Faith, I can pay one white to give it plus uh, zero plus O. Oh. So I want to have enough mana open to protect it for when Nick draws an incinerate, right? And here you see him using the Arcanix actually against me. I think it would have been better to use it on his own library to try to dig for answers against my Order of the White Shield. And now he is using it against me, finding another Arcanix. So he's going to lose it. He's going to drop to three. And that's it. I've won the game. Oh, sweet. Sweet! This proves what you have to do in life is don't give up, keep playing. And of course, Nick, I mean, you've won this match, don't get me wrong, 2-1. Two to one. You've got a great deck. Well, great. A very, very good control deck, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, but I'm just really happy that my Kjeldorn army got a victory. You know, just, um, I'm happy. I, I feel like I've won this match, actually. I feel really good. I feel really, really good. I'm just gonna enjoy. Maybe I'm gonna rewatch is game number three. It's really nice to look at. And that was our very first Ice Age game. Man, that was that was fun, right? It was fun, it was fun, good decks. Uh, next week, we're gonna show you more episodes from this Ice Age Constructed Tournament. We're gonna jump right into the top 16. And here you can see the two decks going head to head in that episode. We've got Dead Guy on Ice, a white black deck played by Matt. And he's gonna take on Elmar, who's playing with blue, red, and green. I've called it Stormburn because there's just a lot of pain in the deck. So I think this is going to be a closer matchup than what we've seen today. I mean, my Keldoran army really couldn't beat Nick's control strategy, but I think this matchup seems way more balanced. So a very interesting game. And this is then the first top 16 match of this. You can see next week right here on Timmy Talks. So on the Tuesday, and remember, I'm gonna show you all the matches all the way up to the final. So this was a group stage match. So this is a top 16. Then we're gonna go to top eight semifinals, finals, right? So all those matches 
are still to come right here on TV Talks every Tuesday, Ice Age Tuesday, I guess, for the upcoming weeks. Now, if you like what you see, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing this on your socials. All those things are free and really help me and the channel move forward. Talking about helping, you can also become a sponsor of the show, and it's actually very simple. All you have to do is simply click on the info card that's appearing right now. That will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And on the Patreon page, you can become a member starting with just $1 a month. And with that, you help me keeping the channel alive. So that's very much appreciated. And there are some perks when you become a patron of Timmy Talks because you can join the Timmy Talks um, tournaments like this one. So I organize tournaments every once in a while to thank my channel members and patrons for their support. If you would like to be part of that, then please join the Timmy Talks Patreon program. And also you can join the Timmy Talks Discord when you're a patron. And last but not least, your name will be mentioned in the fantastic end scroll. What end scroll? Well, this end scroll. Somebody can see.